Hey guys, I wanted to do a follow-up video on the CO dangers, that is the carbon monoxide dangers of a propane forced air heater in my garage. Today I'll be using a Fluke CO220 carbon monoxide meter. I'm just going to turn it on and you'll see it does a countdown. And I've only been running the heater as of this point probably five to ten minutes out in the garage and I'll be working outside today putting back <clears throat> a parts on a generator that I've been working on but uh, rather than trying to use a carbon monoxide detector like you'd find at Home Depot I figured I would just get an instrument that uh, can detect the, the CO much faster and more accurately probably than one of those $20 detectors at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. And I will tell you, I had this meter out a week ago when I was working on one of my generators out in the garage. As soon as I started up the generator, it started detecting uh, CO. So the levels went up relatively quickly. So you can see here that it's uh, at zero. And, you know, I've read some things about CO. Some people say that it stays closer to the ground. Some people say, no, it goes up and it's evenly distributed. And I believe that CO is actually a little lighter than air. So the truth and the fact of the matter is, is it you could probably take the reading ground level, foot, two feet, three foot, five feet, six feet off the ground, and it's probably going to be somewhat consistent. Um, some of the manufacturers of the CO detectors on Home Depot and Lowe's, uh, you know, they tell you to mount it, you know, mount one in, in every bedroom, and uh, they don't necessarily say how high exactly it needs to be off the ground. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. But anyway... <clears throat> To give you an idea of my garage, it is, I don't want to say it's drafty, but uh, <laughs> I'll just kind of give you an idea. So you can kind of see, if you look at the bottom where you can see the sun coming in. So it's not airtight by any means. And especially when you look down the sides of the garage, you can see the, the sun coming in there. And then my door, you know, you, that light is the outside. So there's air getting in there. And, you know, the windows are single pane windows, uh, and I have three of them, I'm just trying to give you an idea of the garage. So it's a three car garage, and it is not airtight by any means. This garage, this door here is a little tightly, tightly sealed in the other garage door. It's not as much, uh, sunshine coming through that one as there is this one over here so every manufacturer recommends how much uh, air you should get in uh, how much fresh air you should have coming in and it's important to to obey those so that you don't have any you know lack of oxygen and then you have the incomplete burn on the combustion and that's what gets your carbon monoxide so for all intensive purposes i'm just going to leave this where it is i'm not going to open up any of these doors i believe the cracks that i have in here could probably opening it uh open it up a little bit but we're just going to monitor you know the the co and as right now, you can see it's zero. So what I'm gonna do is five minutes into the video, I'm just gonna do the work I have to do and I'll come back and, you know, just as a reference, I'm gonna try to show you what time it is as well. So you can see it's 1230, January 28th, 2018. And what we'll do is we'll cut out, I'm gonna leave this propane forced air heater running and inside the garage here I don't know probably 38 somewhere around there but it was uh, 
had that damp feel and it was just a little chilly in here so I decided to take the heat out I'm sorry the, take the chill out of the air while I'm working out here I'm only gonna be out here probably about an hour working maybe top so what I'll do is I'll cut back in and I'm gonna leave the heater running the uh, just gonna still show you that it's on zero and uh, do my work and I'll come back and we'll show it again okay okay guys here we are it's 110 and if you remember I think I started at uh, 1230 so we're gonna go ahead and turn this on it's gonna do its countdown and remember I don't have anything opened at this point it's feeling kind of warm in here so we'll give this thing a couple seconds to start its sniff. And now I'm about, uh, I don't know, 15 feet away. And looky here, it's picking up some carbon monoxide, 0 0.08, 0 0.09. So you can clearly see I do not have enough of ventilation coming into this room right now. So what I'm going to do is open up the door, should probably just open up the garage door slightly, but I'm going to open up this side door and see if, what we can do here. So now you see if I start coming out, I don't know if you can see that, but if I start coming outside, you're going to, obviously it's going to get on to nothing. So stepped right outside, there is zero CO out here. And when I come inside, it's detecting CO. So what that proved to me is that we definitely need to have some ventilation in here. Now, if you went and did this and didn't have any ventilation, you'd see picking up some carbon monoxide. Look at that. So just to flush it out of here for right now, I'm going to try to open the garage door a little bit. See if I can get it to stick there. So bear with me here. Okay, that's probably about where you would want it when you were operating on it. And again, each each manufacturer has a different setting for the recommendation of the amount of fresh air that they want in here. So now remember, we're at 0 0.09, 0 0.08, and I just opened the garage door slightly. I don't know, it's probably four inches, five inches maybe. And the level has went down a wee little bit. There's probably a lot of carbon monoxide in this room right now. So it may take a little bit of time to come out. But we'll see here if it continues to drop. Most uh, carbon monoxide testers without the digital readout, I'm trying to remember, I think I looked at, I think I just bought a Kitty, I think the name was Kitty, I'm not even sure. But I think it doesn't come start beeping until I want to say something like 30 parts per million or billion or million I'll have to look and see what that is so this is why I said if you bring out your carbon monoxide detector a lot of times it probably won't even detect it you know if you have one of the dumb ones without the actual digital readout so that's why I wanted to use an instrument such as this fluke to get a much more accurate detection of the carbon monoxide if there was any so that was what 1210 I'm sorry 110 maybe the carbon monoxide is making me delirious I'm not sure <laughs> think I'm okay at these levels but uh, I wouldn't want to be at this level for a long period of time that's for sure and, and again this level here 
I don't consider that high, but any carbon monoxide's not good. So, remember it was 0 0.9, 0 0.8, I'm sorry, 0 0.09, 0 0.08 a few minutes ago. Now it's toggling between six and seven with this door slightly open. Uh, there's not a tremendous breeze outside, so there's not a lot of air rushing underneath there. So it, it's going to take a little bit of time here to get that fresh air back in here and level this back out to zero. I'm just going to keep my eye on it here and try to keep the, uh, the meter going. I know this... Uh, this fluke, at a certain period of time, it likes to shut itself off of inactivity. So I might have to turn it back on again if it if it turns off, but we'll just see here. Well, the garage is nice and toasty. Like I said, it's been running, I don't know, 12, 30, 45 minutes now, I guess, at this point. So I actually was gonna shut it off because it's a little too warm in here to, to work. But for the purpose of the carbon monoxide test, I wanted to keep it going. I guess what we could try to do as well is um, to try to open the garage up to get all of it out. And then I could see if it builds back up, which might be a better test to do at this point, rather than watch it slowly go down. Oh, I just saw zero, zero. Oh, so did even go to 04, 003, 002? So maybe we don't even have to do the other test. So it's kind of interesting, uh, just by having it open for those few minutes. And I would imagine if, just, uh, just for fun, I'm gonna bring it down by the garage door know how well you're gonna be able to see this but you can definitely feel fresh air coming in down there so you see how it went to zero now if we raise it up it might start detecting a little bit up here up higher I guess maybe as we'll go closer to it yep see how it's starting to pick it back up so I'm walking closer to the uh, I'm going to try something as well. Just put it kind of in front of the flame. So the flame's right there. I'm about five feet in front. So you can see with that fresh air coming in, how it makes all the difference in getting a complete burn that it needs is to having a lack of oxygen and then it starts burning uh, and releasing some carbon dioxide because it's not a complete burn cycle, meaning it doesn't have enough oxygen to burn. So, I'm gonna go back over here where it detected it as well. So I was started out here originally at the fender of the Jeep. Now this is towards more towards the back of the garage, so, so I'm kind of behind it right now. So this is where the oxygen, the fresh air would get to last in the garage. Now over obviously on the other side it's coming in, so I just saw some zero back here. So again, you can now see the importance of having that fresh air coming into the garage. Now I'm going to go back over by the door where I was before. So I'm over on the side where the door is and obviously there's the garage doors lifted up. Sorry the lighting's not so great here. see we're okay over here and again the longer I go on with the video I believe it's gonna stay at zero because I have that fresh air coming in right now so uh, I am at the back of the garage now so I'm kind of behind it 
This is where we had some kind of, you know, still picking up a slightly little bit of it right here. I'm just gonna go down to the ground. My guess is it's probably lower because that air is coming in from the garage towards the ground. And what I'm gonna do is try to go up high as well. So I'm probably about, trying to get the light in. I am probably about seven feet off the ground right now in the back of the garage. Okay, I'm about five feet off the ground here. Uh, again, oh, I'm over in the cor back corner of the garage. Checked it a little bit there. So, back to safe levels in the garage. Now, again, I have the garage door open a little. It's about 40 outside. The garage did cool down a little bit because of having that door cracked open, but it's still really warm in the garage. I would be willing to bet 70 degrees, 65, 70 is what it feels like, maybe even warmer in here. It's fairly warm, but I'm leaving it on because I want to see want to see now again that may be too much that I have it open uh, we definitely know it's enough because it took it to zero and I want to say it's probably four to five to six inches off the ground so Could have probably achieved the same thing if I would have just started out leaving a door open or possibly uh, slightly cracking one or two of those windows open a little bit. But we're definitely at a safe level right now, which is great. And uh, 122 on the clock. So, but you can see how easy though, if someone who didn't know any better put this in their house now keep in mind i'm out in my garage uh working but if someone's furnace went out and they tried to use one of these in their house and if they you know first off they're not recommended inside of a house but if you were to do it for emergency heat and you had no way to monitor a carbon monoxide and you didn't know if you had enough oxygen coming in or not you could see how you can get carbon monoxide in your house so these these devices are not complete burn. You know, they do leave a little bit of carbon monoxide. It's not much, but it gets worse when there's less and less oxygen in the area. So remember, they're burning. They're using a lot of oxygen when they're burning. So I'm just gonna, now we're at zero. I'm just gonna put it kind of, I don't want to get it too close, but let's see, I'm about two feet away from the flame. Kind of got it right in there. Look at that, nothing. Now, if I were to put that, let's just say I took this generator and I started it up and put it by the generator. As soon as I turned the generator on, that would go up to 50 and higher. So uh, this just really goes to show me this test here that as long as you have adequate air coming in, you really don't have any carbon monoxide worries. So. My advice would be to go out and buy one of the carbon monoxide detectors that actually had the reading on it like this does here. I wish I had one so I could actually compare the two to see if the uh, carbon monoxide detector picked up the uh, carbon monoxide as fast as the fluke detector did here. So anyway, that's the end of this video. I just wanted to, I promised a bunch of people I would do a carbon monoxide test of the propane forced air heater and uh, that's what I was trying to do today so hopefully everyone uh, gained some knowledge out of this and they were able to see how it could be very dangerous if you have one of these running and you don't have proper ventilation get that fresh air in and then you don't have any problems